Daf of Torah. This is the final daf of uh, of Megillah Esther. We're going to begin on the fourth on the the fourth column of Tzadik Tess of ninety nine, about ten lines down in the fourth column, the word Omnam. So now we're discussing how Purim compares to other Yom Tovim and said that the Simcha and Purim, the Joy and Purim is greater, and that's because Purim is connects to Hashem's unlimited self, whereas other Yom Tov and connect Hashem's uh, light, which relates to worlds and is therefore in some way limited. On the other hand, in terms of the prohibition against work, Purim is, uh, seems to be less special than other Yom Tov, because on Shabbos and Yom Tov, you're not allowed to work, whereas on Purim, you are allowed to uh, do malacha, you're allowed to do uh, creative work, which is forbidden on Shabbos and Yom Tov. And um, like the Gemara notes, that at the end of the Megillah, it only says that Purim will be Yemei Mishter V'Simcha. Only, it only says it will be days of feasting and joy, but it doesn't mention Yom Tov, whereas earlier it mentions Yom Tov because Mardachai wanted uh, Purim to also be a Yom Tov where uh, work is forbidden, but that wasn't accepted. So why wasn't it accepted? Purim seemingly is ho- is higher than Ali Yom Tevim, and therefore it should have a prohibition on work. So the explanation is that on the that that itself is the reason. When do we have a prohibition on work? It's only uh, on a day like Shabbos and Yom Tov, where it's like the idea of uh, of uh, prohibition on work is where rest is needed. Where, uh, when we, when, when, uh, just like with a person, when he's working, so his whole being is focused outward on what he's working on, and then after a while he rests, and then his, uh, his, uh, his kochas, his abilities that were focused outward, can then return and r- return to within himself. Uh, whereas that that's only relevant where Hashem's uh, light, Hashem's energy is extending outward, and therefore needs a time to come back in. Um, and uh, which is the case on um, Father Yom Tovim and for Shabbos. That's only relevant with a uh, uh, light, uh, uh, energy from Hashem, from within Seder Shashos, from within the chain of worlds. Uh, but uh, on Purim, where we uh, connect Hashem at essence beyond worlds, so then there's no concept of rest. Uh, because uh, at the level of Shem's essence, uh, h- higher and lower is all the same thing. And uh, work, uh, and therefore uh, working, which is the idea of uh, Hashem's light descending down to, world, to Asiya, to the world of action, is the same as the sphere says, Chach, like Chachma, the first sphere, the first um, uh, uh, attribute of the highest world of Atsilus, it's all the same. Because all worlds from the highest to the lowest are all the same compared to Hashem's essence. And therefore, there's no concept of rest because there's no real work. Every, it's all the same. And uh, with Shabbos and Yom Tov, on the other hand, it's within his Shashvah, within the chain of worlds. And that's why she, about it, uh, Shabbos is called Shabbos Lahavaya. It's Shabbos for Hashem. That name, Yud Kevavke, represents Hashem as he... Uh, is involved in worlds. Like we know that Yud represents Chachma, Hay is Bina, Vav is the Midas, and the second Hay is Malchus. And that's why on Shabbos and Yom Tov we say, Ran no Tzadikim Bavaya, that uh, Tzadikim should ex- exalt and uh, rejoice in, in Hashem. Again, because on Shabbos and Yom Tov there's a revelation of Havaya, of Hashem's name, Yudke Vavke, which, which, yes, it's a high revelation of Hashem, but it's so limited, whereas Purim, it's beyond that, and therefore on Purim, there's no work. Now, in a, a mime, another Maimer, uh, we quote the Gemara that a heretic once asked uh, Rabbi Yeshua, it says that uh, Hashem rests on Shabbos, but Hashem still makes the uh, rain come and makes things grow. So Hashem is still in effect uh, transgressing the, the malacha of the uh, Zayre of planting on Shabbos. So Rabbi Shua responded that um, just like if you're, you're carrying from one domain to another domain, but uh, that's normally a malacha, uh, but 
but if it's all within one uh, within, within one domain, then it's not a malacha. So the whole world is one domain. It's all Hashem's, and therefore it's not a malacha. So seemingly this answer it, it is doesn't make sense because yes, there's no uh, malacha. There's, you, you don't transgress the work of carrying if it's within a uh, one domain. But the rest of the malachas apply equally, whether it's in a private domain or a public domain. So how would it affect planting? How would it affect all other malachas? Lighting a fire, etc. they apply in a private domain too. So, what Rabbi to say was that when can we talk about uh, working hard and then resting and when does Hashem's light extend outward and then come back that's only within Ishashlis within the chain of worlds but at the level of essence beyond worlds and beyond a relationship with worlds so then darkness and light is all the same and there's no concept of rest so now we can understand why on Purim work is permitted uh, because Purim connects Hashem at Hashem beyond his shashas, beyond the chain of worlds and beyond even surrounding worlds at, at Hashem's essence. And therefore there, there's no extending outward and there's no rest. It's all the same. So now the, the, the Mimer still needs to understand that uh, on one hand, we're saying with Purim, you're allowed to work because it's such a high revelation. So then why did Mordechai want to make a decree to prohibit work on Purim? Did Mordechai want to limit Purim to within Hishashalus, within the chain of worlds? Furthermore, in previous Maimarim, we linked Purim and Yom Kippur. We said that they're connected. And like we see that but with both of them, there are raffles on Yom Kippur. The Kain Gadol makes a raffle about which goat should be Fashem and which should be the scapegoat. And similarly on Purim, Haman made the raffle to determine which month would be and which day would be the day of their annihilation. And so with Yom Kippur, with Yom Kippur, uh, there is a prohibition on work. Now, it, we quoted uh, in previous my mind that uh, uh, all Yom Yom Tovim will be nullified uh, when Mashiach comes, except for Purim, whereas Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur is not mentioned in the list. Now, we see that Yom Kippur is stricter than all other Yom Tovim in terms of the prohibition on work. Right. It implies that on Yom Kippur, it's like Purim, that it would still exist even when Mashiach comes. Uh, but we still see a difference between them, that Yom Kippur is forbidden, uh, uh, we're forbidden to work on, even more than on other Yom Tovim, unlike Purim, where work is permitted. So why is Yom Kippur and Purim in this regard? So the explanation is that with Purim, the reason why it's it's a, you're allowed to work on Purim is because the light that uh, is brought down on Purim is even greater than on Yom Tov, uh, on one hand. But on the other hand, the light of Yom Tov is more revealed than Purim's light of Hashem. Because, uh, and we'll understand this, refers to uh, considering why uh, miracles in the times of Golos, in the times of exile, those miracles are in more enclosed in nature. For example, in the miracle of Purim, uh, there was no clear um, break of nature. On the other hand, in the time of the base of Migdash, there was many miracle, there were many miracles uh, beyond nature. And this is because in the times of the base of Migdash, over on the top of Kuf, uh, in the times of the base of Migdash, uh, had, had the spheres were shining, and it was a time of uh, panim b'panim. We were face to face um, with, uh, with Hashem, and therefore, uh, therefore, the, when Hashem's light came down into physical things uh, and into nature, it's still. Uh, it, we still uh, felt the divine aspect there, and therefore there were clear miracles uh, without any Kaylee, without any receptacle able to hold it in and cover it. 
And like we said previously about the uh, lion, the fact that the lion, a lion down here is not kosher, even though the source of the lion is Pnei Ari, the face of the lion in the Merkava, a very high spiritual source. Um, but uh, it's because it's actually such a high spiritual source, therefore it has to come down in a concealed way. And that's like uh, the, that on Purim, the light comes down in, in a concealed way. On the other hand, on a regular Yom Tov, it comes down in a revealed way, and therefore on, it's a, it's more integrated. But on the other hand, and, and actually because of that, because the light comes down in a revealed way, you're not allowed to work on those Yom Tov. And there is an advantage when the when the miracles are, con- are revealed, like the Navi complains that that we're not seeing uh, your signs. Uh, we, which shows that, that we want to see the divine hand and we want to see miracles. Um, the miracles which are enclosed in nature, they uh, are in a, come out of the final hay of Hashem's name, whereas the miracles that are open miracles, they come from the yud of Hashem's name. So... The revealed miracles, they're, they're, at the, they're elevated, they're, from a, uh, a, they're in, a, in a way a high, a high spiritually because they're revealed godliness. Um, whereas on Purim, yes, it's a high level, but it, it, it doesn't come down in a revealed way. Uh, and, and that's why in Yom Tov, that's why we explain in Yom Tov that uh, there's a prohibition on work Now, uh, with Rosh Chodesh also, there's, it, you're allowed to work on Rosh Chodesh, and this is, uh, this is also because of the difference between them, that uh, on Yom Tov, there's revelation of godliness, um, on the other, which uh, more than on Rosh Chodesh, and similarly more than on Purim, where the godliness is, uh, is covered and concealed. Hmm. And that's why Yom Tov is called Mikra Kodesh, unlike Purim, because Yom Tov is a proclamation of holiness because we can sense and we see that holiness. On the other hand, with Purim, it's concealed. Uh, but on the other hand, the quality of the lights brought down on Purim, it's Aaron, so Hashem's unlimited light. And uh, therefore, beyond, in that way, it's beyond Purim. Uh, it's, uh, sorry, beyond Purim is beyond the other Yom Tov. And uh, the way that this was brought down was through the mysterious nefesh of the people, their self-sacrifice, not to give up their faith, either, even when their life depended it, dependent on it. Now, although Purim has a disadvantage that Hashem's light, uh, which is manifest on Purim, is, is concealed, but still, it's not totally concealed. It's just like the miracle of Purim that, Yes, there's no open miracle, but we can still notice the, the miraculous turn of events. Similarly, Hashem's light on Purim, yes, it's uh, somewhat concealed, but we still notice it. And uh, so therefore, it's not a con- complete concealment. Now, uh, we see a similar concept uh, where the Arizal says that really the talus is, is holier than uh, the tzitzis, the talus, the, the sheet itself is holier than the tzitzis, the strings around the, 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 on the four corners of the talus. But because the talus is so holy, so therefore that holiness is too much to be manifest uh, in the talus itself. And therefore that hol- the talus, uh, doesn't take in the holiness and only the strings which represent a more limited godliness over there but actually because it's more limited therefore it's able to take in the the uh the um the holiness in the strings more than, and not in the talus and therefore the talus can be used for uh, mundane uh, matters whereas the tzitz has become holy Similarly with Purim, that on one hand, that the light of Purim is greater in Purim than Yom Tov. So it's like the talus, uh, the sheet that's greater than the strings. 
Now, Mardukai wanted uh, to create a prohibition of work even for Purim, and that's because he wanted Purim to have both advantages, that it should both be a great uh, sp uh, spiritual light, and also that it should be revealed, So, the, which is normally the advantage of Yom Tov. So, so on Yom Kippur, they would, like we said before, they would make a girl, or they would make that raffle which goat goes for carbon fashem and which goat becomes a scapegoat. In the base of Migdash, then there's no place for our sins. The sins are not noticeable. And, and uh, on that day of atonement, the day where our sins are un, uh, not noticeable, which, uh, which is on Yom Kippur, so it's called Shabbos Shabbos, and it's the ultimate Shabbos. And, uh, and uh, uh, Hashem's light is revealed on Yom Kippur, and that's why we don't do work on Yom Kippur, and even more so than other Yom Tzavim, there's even more prohibitions in Yom Kippur. So Mardachai wanted to bring Purim to that level as well, just as with Purim, it's Hashem's, or in Seif Hashem's unlimited light on Yom Kippur, it's also. But nonetheless, Yom Kippur is still, there's still a prohibition on work. But Mardachai was unsuccessful. Why? Because with Yom Kippur, it's a biblical mitzvah. And therefore, Hashem can put together opposites. He could put together uh, that uh, on, on one hand, it's, uh, it's, uh, there's a prohibition on work because it's revealed godliness. On the other hand, there's the raffles and all the signs of the uh, concealed uh, godliness from beyond. Whereas on Purim, uh, we're not able to. Uh, we're not able to bring this down because Purim's only draw bonon, and therefore we don't have this ability to put together opposites. And also, since Purim happened in during Golos times, during times of exile, so then again, there's less revelation. Although we explained that the reason why with Purim uh, there's no prohibition on work is because it's. Uh, Purim connects Hashem as he is beyond worlds. Alternatively, we could explain that on both Purim and Yom Kippur, they both reach a, a godly light, uh, which is uh, from beyond worlds. But when, uh, but that light, when it, it descends into worlds, it descends in a different way. Uh, that uh, Yom Kippur, the, the Yom Kippur, um, descends into worlds in a way that that uh, now it's able to uh, it, it it's uh, limited and there can be a prohibition on work. Whereas with Purim, it uh, which uh, where the light is not revealed within worlds in a worldly way, it stays as it was above, and therefore uh, it can't. Uh, it, it it when even when it comes down, work is still permitted. Uh, like we explained before, that uh, that uh, the the if the light beyond worlds, Hashem's light beyond worlds, uh, doesn't differentiate. There's no uh, on time and off time. There's no work time and the rest time. It's all the same, and therefore there's no prohibition on. Uh, work because there's no rest needed. Now, Mardachai want, wanted to uh, pr make uh, Purim also Yom Tov where work is not allowed, but this wasn't accepted because, uh, like we said, that the that Hashem's light stays beyond light where uh, there's no uh, there's no need for uh, rest from work. Now. Uh, this uh, also helps us understand why the whole Megillah doesn't mention Hashem once, not the name Havaya, not any name of Hashem. This explanation is uh, based on what Zaya says on the word L'chaloisam, that it, it reads it as L'chalosam, uh, that, uh, that uh, for their color, for their bride. And it and gives a, a, a metaphor, a parable of a chassan who goes and uh, even he he go he'll go through anything necessary in order to um, to reach his uh, kala, his bride. He'll go through um, even to sleep in a in a tannery in order to reach his bride. So so too, 
uh, the Malchus of Atzillus descends into the lower worlds and even uh, into Kalippa. So this Malchus is the Shechina that goes down into low worlds and even into Klippa in order to stay with us even when we're in Golas, when we're in a state of exile. Like it says, that even when we were exiled to Bavel, the Shechina came with us. So Hashem is that Chasen. Uh, and he uh, comes down to the color, and that shows his great love to us. So, sim- and uh, similarly, when when on Purim, we see that it, the whole chain of events was miraculous, but it's enclosed in nature. So that shows Hashem's great love to us that He'll enclose Himself in nature in order to help us. And that's why Hashem's name is not mentioned in the Megillah because. It's a, it's a light of Hashem from beyond worlds and uh, is not revealed within worlds, whereas the names of Hashem are all about revelations of godliness within worlds. And therefore, uh, it doesn't, uh, it, there's no name of Hashem, which is about revelation in the Megillah, which is about a higher light, but which stays concealed within worlds. And uh, like we see, that uh, the Gemara says that the Nevi'im, uh, the prophets, will uh, be nullified with Mashiach. They won't be uh, noticeable or special anymore uh, compared to the great revelation of Mashiach, whereas Esther is going to never be nullified. It will always stay special. Now, in the, pro- the other prophets, it mentions Hashem's names many times, whereas in Esther, it doesn't mention it all, but Esther will still stay special. So we see that Esther is connected to even higher godly revelation, just that right now, um, it can't be revealed. All the names of Hashem, yes, they they represent revelation of Hashem, but also they're limited. Like the name Havaya, the Yud is Chachma, the He is Bina, uh, etc. The Vav is Midas and uh, the emotions, and uh, the final He Malchus. And uh, whereas Purim, it's uh, Hashem's es- it, it bring down Hashem's essence. And this uh, was achieved through Messiris Nefesh, through their self-sacrifice that no one left uh, Yiddish uh, being Jewish in order to save themselves. Hmm. And uh, so therefore, the light of Hashem in the Megillah is beyond names. The only thing is that it's concealed uh, within uh, nature. And within the story of uh, Mordechai, Esther, Achashesh, and Haman, and Vashti, and uh, with, within that group, so Esther uh, represents Malchus of Attilus, uh, which is uh, the, the uh, end of Attilus, which uh, enlivens the lower worlds. So when Malchus, uh, it, it uh, hides within uh, the lower worlds within Bria. Uh, so that, that's Esther. Then Mardachai is uh, Abba, is Chachma, and and when reading the Megillah, the idea of reading Megillah uh, is to bring down and reveal this great light of Hashem, which is hidden in the Megillah, and bring and bring it down to make it revealed. So this concludes uh, the, the Mimer, and then there'll be another short Mimer on this stuff. So, uh, so what we what, what we've explained is that uh, while on Yom Tov, uh, work is forbidden, that's because uh, after extending oneself out to re- to work, uh, we need um, rest, uh, and 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 that is uh, what occurs on Yom Tov, the where uh, all Hashem's uh, that have that have been extended out would now come to rest. But uh, when uh, when uh, we're connecting to Hashem in a bleak void, an unlimited way, so Hashem's unlimited light is. Um, is uh, uh, not uh, it, it doesn't go, uh, have differences between whether it's going out or coming back in. There's no difference between extension into, into worlds or, or holding back, and therefore there's no need for rest. And that's the state of Purim. On Yom Kippur, you have both advantages. It's both unlimited, unlimited together with even that unlimited uh, uh, light is revealed. And therefore on Yom Kippur, there is um, a prohibition on work. And 
Now then we all explain with this why Hashem's name Ava, is not mentioned in the Megillah. On one hand, there's less revelation, so Hashem can't be mentioned. On the other hand, it's an it what's present is Hashem's presence even beyond his names. Okay, now next Maimer. The Maimer begins with the Pasuk of Azan that uh, that with this each um, young uh, maiden would go into the king with a certain uh, 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 they, were, they were given certain uh, uh, oils or creams etc so what does this mean spiritually that the naira is then the the maiden is then the nishama the soul and there's it comes in uh, every evening and goes out every morning this represents the armor the pillar between the lower ganadin and the high ganadin with which the nishamas the souls elevate uh, towards the king meaning towards hashem Over the page. Um, we'll skip the brackets, uh, well, at least the first half of the brackets. So, uh, what it, although here we explain that, say that with this, uh, the, the, the maiden goes to the king, meaning with the Amod, the pillar between the lower Ganadin and the high Ganadin, that's how the Nishama goes up towards the king. So elsewhere, it explains that Bozer with this refers to Yisoid, which is uh, the sphere which uh, bonds. Um, and, and therefore, Yisoid it, it, also is uh, what connects the Mashbi and the Makabel. Uh, and it, it's the same idea as the Amma, the same idea as the pillar that connects the high Ganadin and the low Ganadin. Either way, the idea of the uh, this pillar that connects the high Ganadin and low Ganadin is bitter, is self nullification, and that's what allows the Neshama to elevate it because it has to be a receptacle to be able to take in Hashem's light. This is the meaning of uh, what uh, Chazal say that the angel Michal uh, brings the souls of Tzadikim close to Hashem. And this is because the soul can't elevate by itself. It needs help from malachim, from angels. But there's exceptions. Like the Gemara says in Baal that uh, how, how they identify the, the uh, seat of uh, Rebchia within heaven, uh, that all the other seats will be lifted and elevated and then brought back by angels. Whereas Rebchia's seat, it goes up by itself, it comes back by itself without any help. And this is because Ruhi had a greater uh, sense of bitter, of self-nullification, and therefore he didn't need help from uh, Malachim. This is similar to Esther, that when she was going into the king, it says, she didn't ask for anything, she didn't need any help, only what Hegai wants to give her. So this uh, Hegai was the one in charge of uh, preparing all the maidens to enter into the king. But Hegai spiritually comes from the word uh, Hegai Libby. Hegai means thought, uh, but uh, thought as it is already in a form of speech. It's still within the mind, but it's in uh, words as as we would uh, say them. And uh, it's about uh, making someone else uh, uh, speak, uh, meaning that the the malachim. Yeah. thought as it comes down to speech is about uh, bringing down e to adding extra energy to speech in order to lift it back up to its source within the person so this uh, and this uh, it represents um, the neshama which uh, elevates back to its source in Hashem and that's the idea of the air of Yibar, that it um, in the evening it comes and then uh, returns um, and with the uh, Renona, with the singing and celebration as it, as it uh, comes close and becomes one with Hashem, it bonds with Hashem. And then in the morning, that's the time of Shuv, of returning back to do the, the Neshama's mission in, in this uh, earth. And, uh, and that is a, a time 
of uh, when we get, have the opportunity to do this job on earth, then it's a time of simcha. So uh, the, the Renana is connected, the, um, is connected to the Neshama's excitement as it comes back to Hashem in, in the time of night, the sp or spiritual night. Whereas uh, when it uh, sees Hashem within the world, that's the, the time of day. So then it comes back and uh, uh, to do what it needs to accomplish in this world. Okay, so that's just a short moment talking about how the Neshama uh, goes back up to Hashem to be rejuvenated, uh, which is the idea of Ratsu, this yearning for Hashem, but then using that connection to Hashem to bounce back and to be more involved and accomplish more for Hashem's mission.